Martano has been considered the informal capital of the Grecia Salentina, where Grigo, the ancient Greek Salentinian dialect, is still known and utilized by Greek speakers of Martano. Martano's historical center, its most ancient core, was once termed the Old Land, and it reflects the so-called Byzantine Cora, the strategic layout of the medieval village. The most prominent architectural element of the ancient village is the courtyard house, the unequivocal symbol of the ancient Byzant civilization and confirmation of a highly productive community. This represents a priceless architectural heritage where you can still feel the ancient flavor of rural Salento. Once at the entrance to the village, there were two gates no longer existent, situated along the present Via Roma, the main street of the ancient village. Until the second half of the 16th century, Marzano was completely surrounded by massive walls, as can be seen from two of the seven defensive towers, still left standing, which were intended to help strengthen the town's fortifications. Martano's architecture has palaces and townhouses equipped with prestigious architectural and decorative elements, such as finely decorated balconies and windows, emblems of ancient families, portals and corner columns. Martano's public spaces are meeting and social gathering places for citizens, small well-maintained urban landscapes decorated by greenery and precious works of art. The playground is a green belt for families and children, where it is possible to enjoy a bit of tranquility and to be enveloped by the peaceful atmosphere. The public park, situated in the very heart of Martano's historical center, serves as the main meeting point for the community. A fountain, designed by the Lecese master Fernando de Filippo, celebrates the olive tree and contributes its extraordinary beauty to the park. More conceptual design elements are found in the Garden of Knowledge, a work created by Luigi Scardino, inspired by a design from the French artist Nicole Gravier. Of considerable interest is the Woda monument, sculpted by Ercole Pignatelli, a synthesis of Baroque decorative concepts. The famous artist Armando Marocco created the Fountain of the Angels, by conceptually rethinking the design of ancient olive oil pictures, which were known as angels. Last but not least, the fountain of Piazza Assunta in Martano is a work characterized by remarkable architectural and interesting aesthetic impact. Public spaces are often used as a sites for cultural and entertainment events, and they represent a paradigm for Martano's sensitivity regarding culture and the promotion of multi-generational social gatherings.
The vast ducal palace belonging to the Gettani family from Castelmola is situated in Via Calimera. It was built between 1887 and 1890, but it has remained unfinished. For many years it was home to the refined duke Salvatore Gaetani from Castelmola. Finally, in 1990, his son Gelasio granted it to the municipality of Martano, transforming it into a public heritage site. The ducal palace is a coalescence of late 18th century neoclassical styles, characterized by eclectic tastes and an affinity for big palaces designed for ancient urban centers. The aristocratic upper rooms maintain the memory of their past, as evidenced by their exquisite mosaic decoration. Piazzetta Matteotti, a small square characterized by its hard limestone paving stones, there is the beautiful former Dominican convent, the present-day town hall. The entire convent complex was built in the first half of the 17th century, but has undergone several important renovations over time. The upper floor was completely rebuilt in order to house the large assembly room. A part of the cloister still retains its original beauty. It has a square-shaped plan and some imposing columns which afford access to a wide staircase. The Rosario Church, adjacent to the convent, dates back to 1652. The interior has three naves with barrel vaults. Here you can admire three side altars of excellent workmanship embellished with paintings and stages. The eye altar is in polychrome marble and features a painting of the Pietà, realized by Alessandro Fraganzano, son of the famous painter Cesare Fraganzano. Santa Maria della Consolazione Monastery, situated on the provincial road to Borgagne, dates back to 1686. After a short period under the control of the Franciscan friars in 1926, it was entrusted to the Cistercians of Casamari, an order founded on the 21st of March 1098 whose ideals were linked to the rules of San Benedict, which were based on acceptance and hospitality. The friars developed the extraordinary resources of their monastic tradition, such as olive oil, honey, but also elixirs and infusions developed to alleviate many ills. The exterior of the Santa Maria della Consolazione Church reveals its simple and austere architecture. This Baroque church is based on a rectangular plan 
divided into three naves with cross-shaped bolts. The mid-19th century floor is very interesting. It consists of majolica, a kind of porous tin glazed ceramic tile. The monastery is equipped with a well-stocked library probably dating back to the period when the monastery was founded by the Alcadini friars. The works are of various kinds, mainly theological, philosophical, legal, historical and literary, with particular emphasis on the linguistic ones of Salentino region, for a total of approximately 40,000 volumes. Inside the Cistercian Monastery there is the Giulio Pagliano Museum, a gallery dedicated to the famous painter from Gallipoli, whose works are now exhibited inside. Here you can admire collections belonging to Michele Paone, including a substantial selection of coins from the Kingdom of Naples and a collection of medallions with sacred images. One section is dedicated to an assortment of objects for everyday use, as well as precious artifacts such as bronze, paper mache statues and fans. In addition, one finds Italian-made ceramics, Austrian and German porcelains and a magnificent collection of Bohemian crystals with fine gold decoration. The church of Martano is an ancient Greek rite building, rebuilt in 1596 according to the date inscribed on the entrance portal. Its baroque beauty reflects the craftsmanship of the Nardu masters, who were skillful local stone cutters dedicated to working with native light. The interior of the church, with a Latin cross plan and three aisles and naves, is very refined with an 18th century wooden ceiling. Here you can admire the complexity and the beauty of the 17th and 18th century Baroque style, as well as paintings of considerable artistic value. The Church of Immaculata, known also as a Church of the Congregation, is a baroque building from the second half of the 17th century. The interior has a single rectangular nave with a vaulted ceiling decorated with floral plaster works and paintings of great visual impact. These representations of rare beauty converge in the sumptuous central altar, bursting with baroque motifs. Along the Via Traiana Calabra or Via Vecchia Lecce, there's a small rural church dedicated to the Lady of Assumption, realized in 1727 by Margoleo Masters. 
The facade is characterized by a tall pediment finely sculpted and surmounted by the Virgin statue in local Lecce limestone. The monumental cemetery of Martano is of praiseworthy stylistic and architectural workmanship. Inside the precious private chapels, dating between the end of the 19th century and the beginning of the 20th century, dignified is a place of eternal repose. The Chapel of Our Lady of the Angels, dating to 1721, is of great architectural importance. Similar to many other Salentin towns whose economy was linked mainly to agricultural, the existence and the use of underground oil mills in the social and working life of Martano was important for its development over the years. In Via de Gasperi one finds the ancient San Blasi subterranean oil mill, restored and made usable thanks to a sophisticated lighting system. The underground oil mills, also called the trappeti, were covered in the rock for reasons of cost-effectiveness, but also to exploit better thermal stability underground and in this way to protect the product from excessive fluctuations in temperature. Today, oil production is still an essential element of the local economy evidenced by Martano being part of the National Association of Oil Town, as well as by the Sagra della Ulia Cazzada, a festival taking place in October, which is an important culinary and commercial event linked to olive production. Specchia dei Mori, also known as Specchia del Demonio, is full of legends and it is surrounded by an aura of mystery. It is made up of stone blocks of different sizes, positioned one on top of the other to form a pile, which had most likely a lookout and defensive function. There is a curious popular legend linked to its construction. It is said that the specchia was built by the Moors, desirous of reaching Mount Olympus to see the gods. But the divinities did not approve of this desire, and just as in the case of the legendary Tower of Babel, they destroyed this rudimentary connection between the earth and the heaven, burying the, the blasphemous constructors under the ruins. An expression of an ancient past, the Teofilo Menera, situated in the street of the same name, is the tallest megalith in the Salento, at 4 and 70 meters in height. According to testimony that has reached us from ancient times, the Teofilo Menera or Santodoro Menera was an element of ancient religious rituals in fashion among the Yapijan population in the 9th and 10th centuries before Christ at the beginning of the Iron Age. The site of Apigliano, whose important ruins extend for approximately two hectares, 
is a medieval village in Terra d'Otranto, abandoned between the 14th and the 16th centuries. In the beginning there were four places of worship inside, however today the Church of San Lorenzo is the only one still standing after the abandonment of the medieval village. The church dates back to the medieval era and preserves the remains of the original flooring, consisting of smooth surfaced irregularly shaped limestone slabs. It burned to the ground in 1582 to be built again, as can be seen from a Greek inscription found on the architrave of the entrance. The presence of 60 graves and 24 ossuaries in the area adjacent to the church indicates that it was a real and a proper cemetery. According to some medieval practices, children were buried near the church roof. In this way, the water coming down from the roof was blessed after having reached the sacred building, guaranteeing another blessing to the burials. Thank you.